What's up everyone? This is Don with Third Creative. This is the walkthrough tutorial video for the Ascend Multi-Sport Photoshop template. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the layers and the processes that you need to customize this template and hopefully get the best final product possible. Uh, we're going to start off with the 4x5 horizontal. Um, keep in mind, like the all of my tutorials, uh, all of the concepts and the layers, they're pretty much consistent across the board with all the files. So what we cover uh, on this vertical file, uh, the same thing will apply towards the uh, horizontals, the memory mate, the button. There's a few uh, specific things that are unique to the horizontal or the memory mate or the button, and I'll touch on those at the very end. Um, but everything that we go over here it's going to apply across the board. So first things first, um, when you jump into this, the probably the first thing you're going to want to do is change the background color. Um, we have orange here. It's split up into two separate layers. So the very first one you'll come to is about halfway, midway down. You'll see change lower foreground color. So this, uh, this particular layer is at the bottom and it's got a, uh, gradient mask, excuse me. Uh, so it's gonna fade towards the top. You can change the color uh, just by clicking on this little swatch here and identify the color you want, keep it moving. Um, the other layer that controls the color is down at the bottom inside this background layers folder. Double click, pick the color you want, keep moving. Before I move on, we'll come back to this first foreground uh, color option. I mentioned it has a gradient mask, and uh, you may want to adjust that. I've got it set where it works, but if, you know, this is a question I get quite often. So real quick, I'm going to touch on it. If you select this gradient mask, go to your gradient tool, looks like this. Come up here, make sure when you go through your gradients, make sure that you have white, black to white or white to black. As long as you have that, you're in good shape. You'll want to hold down shift and you'll want to click and drag from the point where you want full opacity to, to no opacity. And you can adjust it. So just so you can see, I'm gonna do just a little one right here. Okay, that doesn't look good at all, but you get the idea. You just, and you can keep doing it over and over until you get it how you like it. And I set it up this way so that we don't have a gradient mask on the subject itself. When you do that, if there's anything in the background, you start to see it like these lines, you can see through your subject and it doesn't look right. So I split it up into these two options here, foreground and background. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, within the background layers folder, we have some uh, textures and a pattern. They are set to overlay, and uh, they have some adjustments to the opacity. I have this set up to where I think it looks good with the orange color that we have. Um, however, when you change your color, depending on how light or dark it is, um, these overlays and these patterns may be too light or too dark. So keep in mind that you can come in here and adjust the opacity up and down to your liking. With the pattern, you can come into the bevel emboss and you can play around with the opacities of your shadows and your highlights. You can play around with the depth and the size. Um, most of you probably won't want to get into that great detail, but if it's, you know, if it just doesn't look right with the color that you've chosen, I want you to know that you have those options to come in here. You also have the option to, you know, you'll notice that I have optional on all of these. I just really want to drive that home that these are optional and you can turn them off. So if you don't want a grunge texture and you want it clean, turn them off. If you don't want the pattern, but you want the grunge texture, you know, turn the pattern off. Um, a lot of these little details uh, and fine tuning can really help make your image look that much better. Um, and if you're lucky enough where just changing the colors looks great the way I have it set up by default, then 
that's that's great too. Um, keeping it moving, the next layer we have just above the background layers folder is upper background haze. There's several uh, layers or layer folders in here that are for haze or fog, smoke, whatever you want to call it. Um, you'll see this one here, uh, which actually is uh, behind these uh, shape layers here uh, in the upper portion. So you can turn that off and see that you lose that. Um, we also have one that is over the lights but behind the subject, and we have one that is uh, foreground haze that is in front of the subject and really at the lower portion of the canvas. All of them have a color overlay. They are set to white, but you actually may like the look of adding just a hint of color. So we have an orange background. If I come up into the orange area and start to add some color, you can't really see it as much because it's blending, but let's go ahead and close out of this. Let's increase the opacity. You can see, you can still see the smoke, but when you start to add in a little bit of color, it doesn't, um, it doesn't wash it out or lighten it up as much as if you leave it white. That may or may not be, you know, something that you want to do, but I've added these color overlay options to all of them so that you do have that option. Uh, we'll leave it at white. It is uh, by default set at 30%. So all of these, play around with them, increase them, decrease them. Once you have your background color, you can start to play with all of the, the haze to get it where you want it and uh, the patterns and the overlays. And you can even adjust these vignettes that I have that darken these corners. Um, since we're on that subject, we'll just jump up to these vignettes. So if you, um, if you want to change any of them to be lighter or darker, it's really easy. This one is an exposure vignette. You can double click on it. Move this slider left and right. And same thing with the levels. You've got three sliders here. You can move them left and right, play around with them and see see what looks good. You can turn them off if you want. This is an additional one. Um, you really have a lot of lot to work with there. Let's not skip the background lights layer. Let's take a look at that. If we open it up, I've got it split up into um, a few sections. Um, we've got circle light layers. If you look in there, it's just subfolders and it's just rows of these lights. You really don't need to do anything with this folder. This is the folder you want to come to, background arrow shape layers. So it's referring to these, this arrow shape. Um, if we look inside, there's three shape layers. And so they're stacked. The very top one is the primary shape where you see all this black. Um, you can adjust the bevel and emboss, you know, where you can barely see it here if you want to get into that detail. But really what you're looking for is this color overlay. Double click on that word color overlay, click on this box, and just pick the color that you're looking for. Keep in mind the darker it is, the more contrast you get. If you start to get light, you lose that contrast and it you know, really doesn't look as good. You lose the effect. So keep that in mind. Try to stick with a darker color. Um, same thing with the second one. It's actually going to be this middle, which is a, a white. So you can click on color overlay and change it to anything that you want it to be. Same thing applies with the bottom one. So you get the outer outline. It's set to black. Select color overlay. Pick anything you want. All of them have some drop shadow uh, attach. Drop shadows attached. So if you want to get into that great detail, you can start to get in there and open them up, play with the distance, the size, the opacity. You can really fine tune it if you want or if you need to. Let's close that up. Um, before we move on, um, I have it turned off by default, but an additional option that you have that kind of correlates to this background lights layers, but is not it's not inside the folder because it needs to be in front of your subject. And we'll jump up here to light flares, optional and adjustable. 
All right, so let's explain that. I'm going to open it up, and you can kind of see it creates a little bit of um, variance of brightness on some of the lights. I think it might help make it look a little more realistic for two reasons. One is, you know, typically the lights are not always exactly the same brightness, so it adds some realism in that aspect. But then it also gives you the option to kind of... Uh, allow some of the light to, to wrap around your subject or to create a light flare kind of type of effect. So let's look at these. I'm going to use my move tool and you'll be able to see where each one is. You can move these anywhere you want. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. You can lower the opacity. You've got all these options. But really, if you come down, you can find, well, any of them. But this one I have overlapping his arm here and so it really lightens that up if I turn it off you can see what the difference is and the idea the concept was to hopefully make it look like light is wrapping around the subject a little more realism now if you're doing automated volume you know it's not gonna look right um, because this is set up just for this subject um, so for example you know let me see this one right here like if it were right there when you put your uh, subject in that's not going to work you're going to have to fine tune it you can turn them off you can duplicate them to make more you can put them at just right where you want them um, but it is a little more custom and it's definitely a hands-on manual approach so uh, you may not want to use that if you're not wanting to take the time on each individual really just depends on what you're doing but it is there so the reason that I jump up to that is to explain one other thing which is this background lights layer I've got it set to a size you know that I think looks good but you can actually scale this up if you want to if you do you just want to make sure that you select this layer folder along with the optional light light flares just let me do that so that you have them both selected and that way when you click on one of these anchor points and I'll hold down shift I don't think you can come down too much you'll lose it you come down about that far but if you want it bigger you can do that um, it is another option you just want to make sure that you have both of these selected and that way it'll keep the light flares lined up properly if you don't not a big deal you'll just have to move all of them you know to line up with a light so that it looks right all right what else do we have uh background haze over lights okay so let's open that up you've got a couple um, of course you have your color overlay which we talked about that you can use you know any any color that you want did we change that let's go back there we go really change the look of this all right so there's a couple in here you can um, turn both of them on you can play with the opacity you can play with the colors the color overlay um, it's set to white uh, let's see here so these are going to appear over the light. If you turn it off, it does create a lot more contrast. And so you may like that look a little better. Um, it's all about options, adjusting opacity, fine tuning it, you know, turning both on just one or the other. Um, you can get in there and decide what looks best. This next folder is for subject images. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, just insert all your subject images in here, scale and position them. You may have automation software that does that for you if you set that up. Um, we talked about the light flares, which are optional and adjustable. The next, uh, we actually talked about that. That's the foreground color. Uh, foreground haze. And so this is um, the haze that would typically cover this lower section. Um, I've got one in here if you want to kind of whitewash the whole scene. So if you do a lighter background, this might come into play. Um, we've got some additional ones down here. Just depends on how much coverage you want, how how much smoke or fog that you want. 
just like all of the others, they have color uh, overlay options and they're all adjustable as far as opacity. We have some lower vignettes because I split the background color into two sections, background and foreground. I had to add an additional vignette um, that applies towards the bottom and it's the same concept. You can turn them off, turn them on. You can double click here, use the sliders to fine tune them. Uh, next, we have the lower triangle. This is very simple, straightforward. You've got a stroke outline. So if you double click that, you can change the color of the outline. You can also change the size if you want it bigger. You can also change it from outside of the shape to inside of the shape or center where it splits the difference. Uh, let's cancel that. Um, if you want to change the color, click on color overlay. Very simple. Select the color that you want. Um, Next we have our text layers and so they kind of go hand in hand with this triangle and I say that because you might want to use this triangle uh, to add text probably you know maybe the year maybe you don't want senior and 2023 next to each other on the same text line maybe you want to move 2023 down inside this little triangle or maybe you've got a little uh, small logo for their school that you want to add there Think that would be a nice touch you can add those things in there so keep in mind you can always duplicate a text layer um, if you just uh, right click duplicate layer now you've got two so I could use one for the year and I could move it down now obviously you can see it doesn't fit right so you have a few options here you know I explain one thing and it always leads into another um, one is you can adjust the kerneling and um, I won't get into great detail but it, if you pull up your character panel the kerneling is the space in between your characters um, the larger the number right here the more space in between your your letters the uh, lower the number the less space you can click and drag left and right to control that spacing to make it fit. Another option you have is to make this bigger. Now obviously if you make it bigger it'll start to run into your text. So if you were to select this triangle layer, hold shift, select the entire contents or the entire folder of the, the lower text folder, you can just use your arrow key. Well, I've got this kerneling selected still. Let's get out of that. Try that again. We're going to select both layers and use our arrow key up. So you'll have to decide how far you can go up. Obviously it'll get to a point where it won't look, won't look right. But as you can see it's making this lower triangle space bigger. So depending on how big you want that triangle to be or how big you need it to be, you've got some room to move it up to put that logo in there to put the year in there jersey number whatever you want to put in there so it's another option uh, that i wanted to cover all right i think the only thing i've kind of really have already touched on this the main thing about this is that is when you pick your color if it's darker these vignettes the pattern the texture overlays um, and the haze will it'll look different it's all set up to look good with this mid-range color so if you go lighter if you go darker um, you might want to take a, a little bit of time to adjust opacities of the the smoke or the haze you might want to take time to um, increase or decrease the vignette layers um, you may want to adjust the opacity of some of the textures. Um, I think taking a little bit of time to uh, fine tune those, those little details is what will make this look the best. And that's something I did for all of the sample images that you'll see on the website or the social media posts. Um, I took the time to go in and adjust them all to your liking. I know time is money, so a lot of you need to get in and get out. So hopefully um, you can change the color real quick and it'll look good and just keep it moving. 
but I try to cover try to cover everything and encourage everyone to to take the time to work on those finer details if you can all right so I think that's it for explaining the layers um, let's open a horizontal real quick and we'll uh, just touch on a few things and we'll wrap this up all right so we have our two by three horizontal file pulled up here uh, not really much different to cover um, we have a uh, team slash subject images folder here which we have our sample team image I just have it as a, a flattened single layer um, but this is where you're going to insert your your subject images um, which this is a very large group you may have a smaller group and so depending on the size of your subjects and the number that you're trying to squeeze in here you may want to adjust a few things um, one thing is the foreground color so we talked about this you may want to adjust the, uh, the gradient mask uh, which we already talked about that's one thing you may want to also adjust the size of the lights just like the individual we have the optional light flares and then we have uh, let's see here our background light layers here you can just select them both click on this anchor point um, depending on how you have it set up you may or may not need to hold down shift to maintain uh, proportions um, I hold down shift and you can just start to drag out it'll make it bigger and you can get really big or you can get about that small right there just depending on what you need so uh, I think you know that detail how big the lights are relative to how big your subjects are can make a difference and I just scale up scale down you can also click anywhere in the center move it up move it down I'm holding shift to try to keep everything in place the best that I can keep it centered um, but that is something that you may want to do for your horizontals um, to get the look that you need I think that's pretty much it um, everything else um, it's pretty much the same I do know that the text layer in here I've got the team name split into two different colors we all know that does not work well for automation but you know with this being a horizontal it should be for your team image where you can do that one thing by you know manually and uh, it won't need to to do that through uh, any PixNub software or anything like that um, the accent lines a little bit different um, they're just not overlapping I've got them set up where uh, you've got one on the right and you've got one on the left now you may need some space uh, more space or less space uh, in between the two accent lines so there's a, a few options that we have here um, if you need to change the size it gets a little tricky so what I recommend doing is to delete one which probably sounds a little bit crazy but that's because we're going to click on an anchor point you need to zoom in close enough where you can work with it and you want to click on one of these middle ones I hold down shift to try to keep it I don't know it wants to get bigger okay so let's click on the anchor point now click in the middle and drag to the right or to the left okay let's say you get it the size you want it now we want to duplicate it so we'll right click and we're going to duplicate the layer I'm going to hit OK now we have two now they're both skewed in the same direction so what we'll want to do is come up here to edit transform and we'll want to flip one of them horizontal and that one will want to move so I'm gonna hold down click on our anchor point then hold down shift click in the middle and I went to a little, it's a little sensitive yeah there we go and you can also use your arrow keys you can get it how you like it once it's close select the entire folder titled accent lines and we'll center it we'll click on select all and then we'll use the center horizontally um, 
So that's that's one way to do it. Another is if they were bigger and you needed a little more space and you weren't concerned about maintaining that that skewed uh, angle there, uh, you could select the accent lines, use your, um, what is that, the marquee, and you can click, and you can drag, and then you can add a layer mask. Probably not the best way. You'd want to invert it, control or command I, um, but it might be quicker. So anyways, uh, I think that's it with the horizontal. Um, we'll just touch on the button in the memory mate and wrap it up. All right, so we've got our memory mate pulled up here. Um, you'll customize it the same way as far as colors and everything is concerned, but uh, the primary thing to know here is your subject images are going to go into the subject image folder, self-explanatory. Um, but the way that we get our team image right here is basically to start off with the 4x5 horizontal and build your team image, save it as a JPEG or PNG, TIFF, um, some sort of file where you can access it and, and drag and drop. So I've got mine pulled up here, and it's, it's just that simple. Select your team image, the 4x5, drag, let go. It's going to cover the entire canvas. So I'm going to hold down shift and scale down to the size that I want it. You know, you can try to match what I have in here or you can make it bigger or smaller depending on what works for, you know, the poses that you have. All right. So it did not go in the folder, but that's okay. We'll just click and drag it down into the folder. So now it has a, a stroke outline that's built in automatically applies it and you can you can fine tune it move it around whatever you need to do if you want to lose a stroke just click on this little eyeball here and it won't have a stroke anymore you can see um, if you need to change the color just click on that and select your color very simple very self-explanatory um, in my previous videos I've explained this process but let's say you have um, a subject image that isn't facing um, you know in this case he's facing to his right or camera left let's say it's the opposite and it wouldn't look right to put him on the right side of the canvas it's very simple all you have to do uh, is slide these over here and just for visual sake let's I know it won't look right, but let's flip him horizontal so he's facing the right way. All right. And then just click on your team image and move it. In fact, what you may do is click on your team image. And before you move it, come up here, hold down Control or Command, and also select the lower text. And that way it will move both and it will keep them centered so you can move it. I have the text centered to work with this, um, or at least the original. You can always just select the text and move it around, you know, to be centered up. You can do it separately if you want, but it'll help keep it centered. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got this um, this foreground color overlay that you may decide you want to adjust the uh, the gradient mask. But everything else applies. So last thing, you know, which is to explain the button. And that should be it. All right, so we have our button file pulled up. And if you've ever worked with any of my previous designs that include the button file, or if you've watched a previous video, you already know all of this. There's not much to explain. The main thing is the very top layer folder is the bleed guide. So it is turned on by default and this allows you to see what your safe area would be and this uh, middle area is not safe but may be seen as part of the wraparound of your button and the dark area obviously you're going to lose so this just helps you position everything to your liking so that you know it will fit um, make sure that you turn this off obviously before you save your images now a question that I've been getting is why are the images square? Why are they coming out circle? 
you know, with transparency, you know, around the circle. Um, the labs that I use, I insert square images like this, and they give me something very similar to this, this bleed guide. And they give you the option to zoom in, zoom out, and make sure that you keep everything within the safe zone and that you don't lose anything important. And that's the reason that I added this bleed guide here so that you know that going into it, it's gonna work when you use their bleed guide. Um, so don't uh, let that trip you up. The fact that it's not you know, transparent around the edges in a circular shape, it's no problem. And it's actually good because this gives you a one by one ratio. You can actually use this file, you can, you know, to use the whole space, maybe for Instagram. Make this bigger, you can come to your subject image and scale them up. You can, you can move the lights up, you can play around and use it just as a one by one image. But it is also the one that you would use if you want to uh, create files to be used as buttons. And that is it. So they're always long. I always wonder if I've covered everything. Hopefully I have. But another thing I always do is, is say that if there's anything that I haven't covered or if you still have questions, uh, feel free to reach out. I always try to get back as soon as I can. And I always want to help you uh, get the most out of it and uh, hopefully keep you coming back. And most importantly, hopefully uh, help you make, make some cash. All right, so that's it. That's all I got. Time to start working on the next one. And until next time, we'll see you.